so there are different organizations and uh, groups communities linux foundation is one of the common uh, foundation you know unix and linux they are look similar but they are different how many of you know what is the difference between unix and linux it's completely interaction session you have to talk session you have to talk what's the difference what's the difference again we are again we are getting reset <laughs> krishna so open so is it with me i just uh, opened up my mic is uh, are you getting resound now no no good no good no. so we are getting <laughs> Linux is open source uh, operating system, right? Yeah. And uh, Unix is uh, uh, parent of Linux. Parent of. Any other differences, you guys? I'll say. Uh, so uh, I can say like Linux is uh, something like Unix-like system, but not exactly, you know, uh, similar because. Um, Unix is a closed, uh, it's not open source. So in order to use it, we have, I think we have, couldn't even see, you know, we just have to take the structure of what they have given and then use it. But whereas in Linux, it is open source and then we, we can go and contribute and uh, like even, um, what is it say? Uh, change or whatever, like the, and configure the, the way we wanted. Exactly, yeah. So uh, open source, whenever you heard, you can contribute. So what you will contribute? Uh, if it, it's actually it's open source, people say like it's open source doesn't mean like everything is for free, but it is open source in a way like we can go ahead and uh, do our configurations. Like uh, uh, let's say um, uh, we want uh, like. Uh, something, uh, something like where we can, yeah. like where we can something or copy Probably our code. Yeah, yeah. We can be part of a group. Uh, like suppose uh, somebody is working on VIM uh, command. Okay, so I can enhance or I can do modifications to that underlying code so that VIM can uh, become a little better. Uh, so, so in that way we can contribute yeah that's exactly. an example let's say a simple example say, as you krishna mentioned vi editor is black background and suppose i want to make it as a dark green color as a background that is why our community want to contribute this as a one of the change so mm-hmm. anyone can do that change by our community and then that can be added to the linux OS. Mm-hmm. So Linux kernel can accept once they validate all this working good, then it will be added. If it is not, then they don't accept. So they have some standards. They allow some of them. They don't allow some of them. So if it is really enhancing the power or really making change to the existing system, then uh, open system always open to accept. Closed system doesn't allow uh, because it is not uh, open and it is you have to purchase a license. Red Hat Linux is a closed system. That is a Linux, but it is also a closed system. So Linux is also having closed and open both. Uh, if you go for the Unix system, Sun Unix, um, Sun operating system, Sun OS is a Unix operating system. HP UX is a Unix operating system. And um, IBM, IBM is having its own AIX. So these are all Unix systems. They cannot be available on open source. They have to buy from those companies only, HP company, Oracle company, IBM company. Then only you can get the Unix operating system. And Unix is started almost 50 years back for multi operating system. Multiple users can use that. That is a main logic. Okay, the same concept is inherited in the Linux also. That's why NIX is the same. Okay, so this Linux community is formed to make some of the key features what you have in the Linux that can be used to enhance much more easier way to launch your applications, faster performance, 
and give you best out of what you are currently running on the uh, on-premises applications. So that is the main reason where we got the containerization concept. So to uh, enhance or to standardize what containers should go, uh, what should we have the rules and regulations, we have Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF. CNCF is defined how your containers should be, how the cluster of this containers should happen. Cluster of containers is nothing but Kubernetes. Clear? So that is where we are coming from. So Unix Linux is the origin and from there we got the Docker and Kubernetes. Okay, moving on. So um, yeah. uh, Docker is again byproduct of uh, Linux. Obviously. Yeah. So without Unix Linux, we don't have a Docker. We cannot understand what is happening in the background and how it is running. Uh, that is a basic, okay? Yeah, so what we are going to learn, so in, this course, going to learn in this course. I think I'm getting result. Okay. Uh, you have anything, Krishna? Uh, no, Bowen, I'm good. Yeah. So learning Docker and Kubernetes, the upskilling of your career growth uh, is main objective for us. So Docker is a technology and uh, it's a separate company is also Docker. Uh, Docker INC is there and uh, it allows applications, any application. It may be Python application, it may be Java application, it may be .NET application to run inside containers. That is a main goal for Docker. Okay, then the Kubernetes. Kubernetes ensures the coordinate uh, running multiple containers. So as I mentioned, cluster of same type of containers we can run in a Kubernetes. So that is called deployment process. So that will be very, very strong in the Kubernetes compared with the any other cluster configurations. That's why we have this. Uh, building your tomorrow with Docker and Kubernetes, that is what our objective here. So that's why I started this course. So this is parallel course, which will be running and it is going to take uh, almost um, 45 days to complete this course. Uh, hope this will be parallel to that Python course. So we will be having three days for this and three days to that, but uh, Python course will be closed very soon uh, once it will reach us all the objectives of the AWS. Uh, become a technical expert with this containerization knowledge, what you are going to do this uh, course. So with this Docker, you are going to learn all those uh, skills, how we can make the containers, how we can make all the things. So I think all our ex ex students, so I don't need any <laughs> uh, introduction. So these are blogs which I'm working, updating, and uh, you know that devopshunter blogspot.com that is going to have all the updates about Docker and Kubernetes. Python orientation, we have already seen uh, WS2 by example. This was a middleware technologies related uh, automation. That was the first one you started, right? For uh, WLS2 by example. Yep, yep. So yep. That is almost 15 years. Oh, and yeah. just 12 lakhs of just views of lakhs. this one. Oh, great. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So most of the automations we are focused so that we can also uh, have a good length of uh, exposure in our careers. So I'm keep on working how to automate in every area, whatever it may be Docker, it may be Kubernetes, it may be shell script, it may be Jenkins, Groovy. So that's where uh, I came from. So moving on, uh, what we have in this. Okay, so the problems, applications, how we are going to uh, solve, what are the things which are going to work with the Docker. So uh, the main reason of this uh, Docker came into picture, our virtual machine concept com came into this, is it works on my machine. So this is a developer's uh, voice every time. So he says it is working in my machine, but when it goes to the testing team, it is copied destination, but it is not working as expected. The result is not what he is seeing in the developer's system. So to solve this problem, we have virtualization concept. Virtualization we can do with the Vagrant, uh, VirtualBox and VMware. These are all different options. 
but they are slow they takes longer time to launch one virtual mission we'll come to the next slide about uh, that one the second choice is uh, containerization it is very very quick within fraction of seconds you can bring it up the required uh, it works application so it is just like um we are all having a party and everyone uh, meet at one uh, potluck location let's say we went to raji's home and uh, raji invited us to anyone can cook on my kitchen so uh, let's say srikant knows how to make biryani and uh, he start cooking i said uh, okay i will add some ingredients so srikant add something after some after some time krishna comes and he know some uh, recipe uh, that is dum biryani so he changes the model where to put what vessel and he changes and that entire cooking uh, makes very uh, awesome and you got the flavored biryani so overall uh, the process whatever we did in a uh, rachi's home the biryani cooking process it went well and you got excellent uh, outcome so that is what we want in every uh, place then what we will do so that is the main problem here so problem is how we can make all uh, what are the steps we have performed or what are the ingredients used what are the utensils used so the same structure is required in testing phase also right so the same same thing is required same thing is should be there in the testing phases that is what missing so if i uh, go to shikan's home and he do the thing the regular process it doesn't come what we got it in rajesh home okay so that's the problem he works in rajesh home it doesn't works in shikan's home that's the problem the problem solution is two different solutions uh, one is creating the virtual machines another one is Uh, working with the containers so creating virtual machines first older strategy uh, last decade strategy so we have one host machine you got your biryani set up in one machine and you can make the clone of that one okay so to make this cloning concept virtualization uh, two different uh, companies came up with the different uh, solutions oracle came with a virtual box vmware came with the vmware uh, virtual uh, machines okay and linux is also having that same concept that is kvm so if you compare all these kvm is having some separate kernel level changes and that gives quicker output compare with all this so these outputs what you are seeing here these are all gui based virtual machine and uh, your vmware solutions they are working with the guis so whereas linux kvm that is mostly working with the cli and it is giving better output so these are the different solutions from the virtualization concept virtual machine concept so uh, coming to the docker it's a container so containers are very very useful when you come to the same solution so why it is implemented what is the need of that one the main reason is devops so devops docker is one of the devops tool most of the devops projects whatever the jobs devops engineer or devsecops engineers or sres who are working they will be getting this as a one of the tool docker is one tool so what does it do it is going to manage the containers you can develop the containers and you can manage the software that is going to be isolate one container is different with another container so what is this isolation meaning i am just expanding explaining so if i am going to run a container with a tomcat tomcat container will be running the java application in the same docker machine where we are running docker engine docker container so where we are running another container that can be mysql database so there is no link with with these two okay suppose if i am having the tomcat running on ubuntu operating system mysql is running on ubuntu so this ubuntu layer thin layer what you are having under the containers that will be common one time it will be created on the top layer it is isolated that container is running with the 
tomcat that is different container running with the mysql that is different so layer by layer layer structure is going to be used in the docker so that is called image docker image images will be used reusable so anytime you can uh, run the container you can stop the container you can get the new deployment so new changes in the java application that can be added new code new rows will be added to your tomcat anytime so that is simply possible with the self-sufficient containers and they can deploy it anytime they can run they can stop they can start it okay so that's why it is a part of devops um <clears throat> any questions yeah, yeah uh, no questions yeah, but uh, yeah. she can go ahead yeah just one question why is it called container like... because it contains it contains <laughs> it contains application it contains anything any software it can contain a powerpoint it can contain um, word it can contain uh, any software you take you I name it have, you will get it as a different machine right so it can be called as a micro computer or micro machine something like that I'll come to that one. Application okay. naming is different. So microservice is different and okay. micro, uh, monolithic applications are different. I'll come to that one when we discuss about the SDLC. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to add like uh, to draw some parallelism between the situation I'm going to tell about containerization. So like uh, a decade back, like uh, think of uh, internet connection coming to homes like uh, there were no wi-fi routers you used to connect directly to your laptop or computer and dial up the connection so it was i just you know uh, only you used to give internet connection to a particular uh, machine only one machine you would not be able to extend uh, to other stuff okay so uh, think wi-fi router as a containerization uh, tool okay so you can have n number of sessions with the same uh, router multiple devices like multiple containers so multiple devices uh, can communicate in between uh, using wi-fi protocol as well so i just wanted to add that that's very nice that's very nice thank you krishna thank you krishna yeah yeah so uh, moving on to comparison between the virtualization and containerization here so virtualization that is as i told you virtual boxes and containers uh, as a docker container so there are other companies also providing containerization concept but uh, most popular one is docker so first difference between the virtualization and containerization virtualization takes heavy size as i mentioned the every uh, solution let's say application of tomcat that running on ubuntu one ubuntu separate installation required in the virtual machine and then you can run the tomcat whereas in the container there is a layers so there is no wastage actually duplication is not there that is another advantage you can get it in the containerization any other questions um raja uh no i think i am good okay so boot uh, time just a question so yes, on, on this yep. clarity you see virtualization and uh, containerization mm -hmm. um, so virtualization uh, is uh, kind of uh, similar to physical um, server yes but yes. Uh, which like... will be which will be on cloud right it and can be uh, on laptop also you can run it on the your laptops if it is good yeah, it's basically yeah. it's a hardware mission basically yeah, yeah it, vms yeah and uh, container containerization uh, is it something i can say that uh, uh, virtual i mean uh, mission hardware plus some software can uh, it contains both um both look si same similar uh, virtualization concept comes into the containers as well but mm -hmm. the hardware which you are uh, using in the virtualization it is like a, everything will be simulated uh, suppose you are going to take the ip in your host machine in your windows machine you will be having one ip address and inside the virtual machine another 
virtual IP will come with the NIC. So um, your network interface card will be there in your laptop. So now what happened in the latest technologies, the one card is allowing us to create multiple virtual NICs, VNIC. The same concept is used in the cloud also, virtual NIC. So that concept is helps in the uh, this virtualization concept and containerization also. So everything should be isolated. One application hits means that should go to that container only. That should go to that virtual machine only. So to make that is available, that virtualization will be in and it is going to have uh, <coughs> duplicated or virtually it is created and you can have that with the software only. Yeah, the hardware really hardware will be available on the host mission uh, in our mission. In your local Windows machine, you can have that one. Okay, somebody joined and left. Also, uh, like in, in virtualization, um, whatever the VMs we hosted, it will take the uh, memory or the CPU of the uh, our local machine, right? Like uh, on way which uh, we hosted the application, it will mount the memory memory. Correct. Correct. Yes, whole stack uh, should be available, right? So it consumes more memory, uh, RAM, CPU, CPU. So all these uh, so different all uh, um, hardware related, uh, system related configurations, which will be shared between the host machine and virtual machine. Mm -hmm. So you said like uh, virtual NIC. Uh, so in that case let's say like i have a virtual machine like let's say i have mac and i hosted linux it's the virtual machine so even in the linux i can go and host another system so is that what you mean in linux i can go ahead and then host windows uh you you mean to say cascading one after the other uh, that is not possible on the host machine you can launch multiple instances multiple virtual machines so oh, let's yeah. say you are on Mac, you can create a virtual machine and you can run a Windows. Mm -hmm. That is possible. You can run a Linux machine. You can run Ubuntu. You can run um, CentOS, Red Hat, like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you compare this virtualization and containerization, boot time, that is starting time, is going to be bigger in minutes in the virtualization, virtual machines, whereas in containers, fraction of second, milliseconds. Uh, that is a super fast that is again came all this logics comes from linux only the bringing up system cpus everything they have the technology developed in such a way the time will be so reduced to milliseconds integration costly so if you want to integrate virtual machines it it takes time time consumes means it's costly and when you want to integrate containers it is super simple easier and you can make containers n number of containers let's say tomcat containers i want 10 you can make 10 containers just by scale equal to 10 it will increase replicas equal to 10 it will increase the number of containers that's it very easy uh, it is going to run in virtualization when you're going to have the host machine os is going to be created separately again and again it will be taking the memory also when you install centos on that one you are running the mysql database then centos should be created on two virtual machines how many number you want that many times you have to create that much memory also consumes even though you have a cloning concept in virtualization but the memory consumption is going to be takes a lot okay that's why it is costly package uh, you can pack one virtual machine and ship it to any place so just like one handy is created one any part is created the part can be used in everywhere so the same way the package snapshot how it is going to be used reuse that can be shipped as a uh, one pack one zip file will be created out of your box virtual machines uh, that is what the virtu vagrant concept, packer concept came into the virtualization. Containerization, image uh, based, this, this is going to be all number of layers, multiple number layers. One layer bottom side, you are going to have boot. 
second layer will be operating system kernel then on top of it application will be like that layers will be there and whenever you pull already one layer exists for example operating system ubuntu already exists it doesn't pull that uh, image again that layer will not be pulled again so that's why how it is going to be saves the space and package will be smaller thinner compare with this um, virtual boxes network the last difference is virtualization if you are going to use virtual network will be created docker docker is having its own isolated network and inside that single network it is going to have its own gateway and if you want to connect with the host machine with the docker you need to use the bridge networks okay <laughs> so our meeting is about to uh, disconnect in 10 minutes so if it is disconnect again join back so um, this is a different differences and you can see the icons at the bottom that's a virtualization virtual box and docker so how this uh, solution is going to work the problem it works on my mission the concept is like this you can have the docker containers uh, the containers can run on linux kernels so the linux kernel that can be any linux it can be ubuntu it can be red hat it can be windows 10 above version windows 10 above is supporting emulated linux kernel so this makes the space where you can run the docker containerization so user space where you can run the your containers users space where you are going to install the softwares windows uh, if you're going to say microsoft word is going to be run on the user space if you go for the Linux system and you're going to run the Tomcat, that is runs in the user space. Okay. If you run, if you go to the Ubuntu and you want to run the uh, database, MySQL database, you can run in the user space. So all these are application level users space is required. That is a common requirement. So two important things, Linux kernel is required for containerization solution. Another one is user space. You have enough space to run the containers okay so the handling microservices whenever you run this uh, tomcat or database or some other application that is nothing but a microservices they are squeezed they are not regular applications they are squeezed applications how much you want only takes that one so one of the most important concept in the agile or uh, if you take the lean methodology lean methodology tells that remove unnecessary things so if you're going to take um, one container you are running the container can be run on operating system that operating system will be only kernel it doesn't have any extra flavor sometimes some of the containers let's say you are taking ubuntu it doesn't have unzip command also so that much squeeze containers will be there so um, how much is required to run a kernel that is the only thing will be available in the containers remember that point okay so when you are computing when you are using the aws when you are using azure or gcp all these are container platforms they have their own containers platforms docker is supporting that one and you can see the platforms which are supported uh, in the list in the docker you can see that one so you can run various containers uh, which are not related to one particular application you can run any any application as a microservice so that is makes uh, advantage and most of the companies are switching from uh, monolithic applications to microservices so if you look at the structure of a real-time application which are already existing years long they are running so they can be converted into monolithic to microservice applications so docker image one image will be created that will be stored or n number of images will be stored that is called registry okay so one gb disk is used for one docker image when you run the container that will be again one gb only it doesn't expand that doesn't take much so it is just one layer extra where you can have read write layer okay so when you run this image the same size will be there it will be repeated same and it won't actually take any extra space in your um, docker engine okay so that's the advantage we are going to get from the docker so when you're working on this docker um, 
what all the things which I'm going to cover in this course, you're going to have uh, all the prerequisite uh, things as uh, Linux basics you should have, and at least command line, uh, Linux commands you should have here, and VA commands much more required. So Docker concepts we are going to cover, Docker engine architecture, and then uh, Docker deployment topology. Then we'll go for the Kubernetes concepts. Kubernetes architecture, we'll see how it is going to, and the Kubernetes deployment process, how CICD is going to work in real-time projects. So that is all we are going to see in today's session. So once it is disconnected again, we'll connect. Maybe it is almost, uh, okay, another five minutes. Okay, so the prerequisites for Docker, uh, what are the things required? First thing is you should aware of SSH. SSH, what is SSH? Anyone? Uh, yeah, uh, it's the way that we can connect uh, two servers. Uh, like, uh, so uh, SSH is something like uh, uh, we can have password and passwordless, uh, but we usually it is preferred to have passwordless connection. Uh, it's between the two servers, um, uh, like Linux servers. Good. Any other add ons? Sridhar and Krishna Shikan? It's more uh, secured. Uh... Uh, secure way of communication okay so ssh yeah. is one of the protocols so ssh secure shell so whenever you are connecting with the putty uh, whenever you are connecting your uh, terminal which is on cloud open ssh will be used so again mm -hmm. this ssh protocol is having service and client so ssh clients are your putty and open ssh client and the server will be in your linux machines as raji told we can communicate uh, with within uh, linux to linux one server to another server we can communicate with the ssh protocol so that should be password with password without password you can do so without password you should have a keys generated that is what we are using in the aws so we are generating keys and key pair is shared. One key is required with us and another key with the cloud. The same concept will work with the one machine to another machine. So uh, whenever you want to create a account, GCP, AWS, you need uh, this. So when you want to create a virtual machine, you don't need any anything. So you need to connect. Um, you can connect with the SSH. So you should have a good internet speed to work with the, our Docker sessions. Please have that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I think a little bit disturbance coming from the Krishna. You have to set up your uh, headphones or something. Laptop should be, uh, if you want to work on Docker, we are going to do some of the experiments on virtual machines. So a minimum requirement, 8 GB and a good number of cores. Uh, i5 above is a good system better to have usb earphones that is what i suggest for krishna <laughs> uh, whatever you you have so just have a comfortable so docker when you are working on the introduction we are going to see the difference between the monolithic and uh, containerization applications and what is image how containers works uh, docker in, in Docker, what all the things we are going to cover, these are the topics. So Docker, Docker files, we are going to write our own uh, containers, how to create our own images, that is what uh, Docker files. Docker is going to use a storage that is not in the container, it will be host machine. Within your machine, you can have the, the storage. So that is called volumes. And uh, we can also work with the multiple containers communicating one container talk to another container web container want to talk to database container so that networking how it happens how the bridge is going to be created so all those we'll discuss and registry as i mentioned images will be stored into the docker registry so there are two types of registries one is public another one is private registry so public registry is docker hub okay so please log into your docker hub and create your accounts today and it, if it is not there, if it is already there, you can ignore. Docker Compose. Docker Compose also we are going to discuss. And it is going to launch multiple containers with one command. Docker Compose, one command. That will create multiple containers. Let's say if we want to start one particular entire application, it requires 
two web applications containers and one database container and in front of that load balancer proxy it may be apache so all these three different types of containers you want to launch then you can write in a yaml file and tell the docker compose run this one so it will run all the three different containers in one go so that's what docker compose it's a composition of multiple containers so what are the best practices when you work on the docker containers uh, containerization concept that we'll discuss in uh, detail about that in every aspect we'll be having best practices what is worse what goes wrong all those things we'll try to see and also see the troubleshooting part in every area orchestration is the last topic that's where uh, docker swarm comes into picture docker swarm makes much begin docker architecture so docker architecture how it looks so docker uh, it's a kernel so just like any other uh, linux process will be running as a background so daemon process so docker server or docker engine that is going to be run in your linux operating system that is a major requirement linux kernel is base requirement to run this demo so docker is running how it is going to be interacted just like any operating system when you launch any linux system you start the kernel will be always isolated or wrapped up with a shell or if you see linux shell ubuntu is one shell centers is another kernel shell so if you are going to have on top of one layer that will be actually taking the commands so shell is going to be wrapper and bash shell is one of the example of wrapper so just like linux docker is also having layers so if you see here this is a docker server on top of it wrapper is rest api so uh, why it is called rest rest is uh, one of the sya concept so all the services are exposed which you can access so so far what we are seeing on the boxes on the in this uh, rectangle boxes all are commands if you want to create image you can create but you need to interact with the rest api if you want to create a container you have to interact with the rest api and create it you want to create a network you have to interact you have want to create a volume storage that will be managed again it will be interacted with the rest api so anything uh, you want to communicate with the docker engine you have to give the command first docker after that the sub command so that sub command will be se separated understood by the rest api and talk to the docker and get it done to you okay so that's the what uh, how the docker engine is going to work so containers images volumes network these are the four important things we are going to learn in docker dockerization or containerization and all of them we need to manage and whenever you try to create these images or uh, containers every thing that is uh, that created that images if you are going to inspect the result will be coming as a json output as we have in the aws also aws whenever you create the ec2 instance the result will be in the the description will be in the json format output will be in the json format every rest api is going to work with the same fashion here we have rest api wrapper same thing will work in the kubernetes also kubernetes cluster kubernetes uh, kernel everything works with a rest api communication only so api server api word is same application program interface so this application here is docker interface you can have with the this web services rest api format and you can get the output as a json remember that point any questions okay so how this docker containerization works in real time uh, in projects in in most of the cloud it, containerization is working on cloud containerization is also in on premises okay so first thing it start from the right side images will be created these images will be private or it may, it can be public so most of the time you are going to use uh, your own company specific images uh, so you need to maintain 
private registry and private images okay so uh, plate main platform basic we are going to have ubuntu centers and uh, database or application web application nginx uh, web application supporter and redis this is a database so these are all different uh, images which you can have on your private registry so these images are available you can create n number of containers okay so these images first available in the registry they can pulled into your docker engine where it is running so docker engine or docker host that is going to have a docker daemon running docker daemon is able to create images create containers so image will be pulled from the registry this is called pull so you can pull that images whatever you want there are hundreds of images in public repository docker hub but you want only few of them which is going to run for your project okay so here it is taken two images ubuntu image and redis image two images are there and the from the ubuntu again it created containers multiple containers so you can create a number of containers this containers can be accessed can be run with the docker run command docker run will runs the containers what does it do it is going to get the image and it will make the container okay docker pull means it is going to pull from the registry to your docker host machine docker build means it is going to create the image and put it to register so build will be first command to maintain your docker registry second pull wherever the docker engine is running there you can pull the image where you want to run there you are going to give this containers will be running using the docker run command okay so this is a topology three phases you can have on your uh, client side to maintain this registry and docker host hope it is simple easy clear but when we do practically so we can get more clarity how build will work so build is very simple you are writing a docker file you create your own image okay to maintain your image you are going to write the file okay but the file will be built just like any programming language uses right so here build will create the docker images so once the image is created then you are going to run that is a container so if you if i compare the this process with the java java dot java program is created then you compile that program build after that you are going to get a class so that class object class will be creates the object so when you run the java program then it is going to have the container that image the virtual machine will be holding your java object just like that this container will be holding your uh, on on your uh, docker engine okay so this is a simple process build and run anywhere you can write a docker file you can build it anywhere you can run it anywhere anywhere in the world so only platform is required is docker docker should be same on the underneath hope you understood okay let's do docker demo so in this demo we are going to connect to the internet and then see how it is going to work first we'll see uh, what are the online labs are available and see how it is going to work the next one is uh, validation docker version we can have a image called whale say so this whale whatever docker docker image what you are seeing this is whale so whale image is one of them to say hello hi that is hello world message will be here so that is about uh, demo which we are going to see now um, just launching my browser okay so if you want to see the um three uh, four hours uh, lab we are going to say docker playground so it is going to give uh, labs dot play with the docker so if you just go there you can you should have a docker account then you can directly start so docker hub account you please create and then you can log in so 
once you logged in you will get that start button and you can have this one four hours access practice so you can also launch multiple uh, docker container uh, docker images sorry docker engines three machines we can have our five missions or one mission whatever you want so these are the different topologies one worker one manager so these are all comes when you come to the multiple containers you want to run a cluster so right now i'm not using any cluster concept just basic docker how it works i want okay so here i just created add new instance instance is created just like in aws we got uh, instance and just increasing the font hope um, this is a max okay and uh, let's say hard able to see good right docker yes version so if you say docker version it is going to give that two things one is server another one is client both versions are there and both are same versions api version is 1.41 and the same sync okay so it is having the docker kernel in this machine the ip address is here okay and we are logged into root user and it is automatically given just like in aws we got instance you connect to that but here it is directly on the browser you can get it that's a simple easy thing so it's yeah, a open it source free. yeah krishna uh, sorry Shikant? Yeah, will every container will have separate IP and uh, host name as such? Yes. Okay, so it's as good as different uh, VM. Different VM, just like VM. It is almost like VM. Okay. okay. Yeah, so okay. Git commit number is given here because this is open source. It is openly available on GitHub. So this is a commit ID. You can get that Docker and you can change anything in that one. It's open source. So you can see this operating system, what you're seeing. This is the Linux operating system. Okay. So how do we check? I explained in some of the previous classes, uh, what operating system is this one? How do we check? This is an, an interview question also I mentioned. How do you check which, which Linux it is? Yeah, there will be a file uh, in etc directory uh, called OS release. Okay. So this is a simple command which you can use and you can get the operating system. So this operating system is Alpine Linux. Other day we were working on uh, Amazon Linux and uh, Ubuntu Linux. Now this is another Linux that is Alpine Linux. This is a very smallest, lightest operating system, OS. All right, uh, let's see the Docker uh, commands. So Docker iPhone iPhone version will give you one single line. What is a version? So Docker version will give complete detail. What is the language used for creating this Docker? Okay. Okay. So there is a special language that is created by Google and they have given to public go language okay so go language 1.17.11 using this language it's almost similar to c language but it is much more enhanced uh, capabilities it is having all features what we have in the java and uh, python c java python whatever the best features are there that is available in go go language okay so go okay. language is used to create uh, docker uh, can I ask you one thing? Like, is it uh, Golang? Yeah, Golang. Yeah. Okay. So the Docker files that we write, is it Golang? Is no, it in Golang? No. no. Right? Docker kernel, Docker engine is created with Golang. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. The, I was wondering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Docker so Golang files. is used for uh, creating the, uh, the servers. Kubernetes is also built with that Golang and uh, this Docker is also built on Golang. Right. Um, yeah. So Docker, you got uh, idea about how to check the versions and then another important command is Docker info. So Docker info will tell about is it uh, clustered or not. So you can see there is uh, some line called uh, 
swarm uh do you see swarm in this output so right now there is no continuous running no running uh, stopped or images nothing okay so there is no images that information also you can get it about uh, with this docker info command right um, uh, that's not here yeah so here you can see swarm inactive so we don't have any cluster enabled for this one okay so this is a standalone docker engine so this is the information you can get it all right okay now i'm just checking the docker uh, search hello world okay so the hello world uh, docker images these are all available in the docker hub okay so if i go to the browser and i can say hello world docker so it will be available hub.docker.com in this one official images are there okay so whatever i'm searching in the command line same thing is available here okay so if i'm i want this image i'm going to run docker pull hello world okay so that is a command i have to run so we found that docker hello world is present and we search about that information i can run this docker pull okay so docker pull is pulled then you can see <coughs> docker images okay so one image is pulled and you can see here same way you can search tomcat you can search jenkins you can search for any software and you will get it once it is available you can pull it okay so this is a pull and listing the images okay clear um <clears throat> Any questions? All good. Pull is clear. Okay, now I'm going to run a simple container now. I want to run a container, how it is going to work, see. <clears throat> so if I want to run a container, I'm just say Docker run, and I'm giving the image, image name, and then uh, whatever you want to perform on that one. So if I'm saying here, um, we'll say cow say cow say is a most important uh, common testing command in the linux so it is going to display with a cow symbol and then a message will be popped up message okay the same thing is with the docker so docker indication is a whale whale says so it's saying power so whatever you give that is going to be displayed so this container the whale say container whatever you got it that is run executed output is done then it is exist exited okay so let us see that one where it is docker ps so there is nothing you, you don't see any container running with this ps list process list if i'm going to say a which are exited you can see exited status and you can see this image we'll say we'll say image we run and if you don't mention any name it is going to take randomly two words and it creates a container name okay container name is on the last one okay so if you want to test again the same uh, container with a different input let's say raji now it is run executed this time and previous time what is the difference here it's not pulling again which means like uh, the image is already in the local system yes it just, perfect uh, yeah it doesn't pull from local i mean remote repository exactly so image once it is pulled it is already exists then it doesn't pull again it just use that existing one and you can see the command just change power one to rachi and you can see it is exited and you can see another new name new name for the container and every container is going to have container ID. So this is a hexadecimal number and it is going to identify every container. So container create and destroy, exited. Okay, so that is how we can have the containers. So let's say if I'm going to have a web application server and I want to run an Nginx. 
it is not there nginx image is not there and i'm just pulled from the docker hub so docker hub is having this nginx latest version and it is pulled after that it launched the container so here uh, what extra thing we are seeing here is name of the container i'm just given some nginx is the name of the container and hyphen d you want to run this in the background d demand process hyphen p is a port so nginx is a web server it always prefer to run on 80 port this is a container port this is a host port so in this ip address 8080 port is open okay so this nginx application is up and running okay so let's see 8080 is it, it is also called as local host right 8080 is a port forwarded so okay. whenever i have given the command here 80 container port is forwarded to host port okay okay it's like if we go to our chrome and then uh, uh, give local host then on that it will launch uh, usually it should launch engine yeah, yeah. local host doesn't work here just uh, this is the link automatically given by this uh, playground so you can just open that so open port is just one port will be there this is ip address and this is a port and it will be directly giving because it's all uh, online containers so it gives a different domain name just like in AWS, we are going to have similar kind of setup, right? So 8080 is a port and you got the welcome to Nginx. This is the output, you got it. All right. So that's how we can launch web application, web server is running. Next time, if you run another port, you need another name required. So if you run same, it doesn't work. Okay. That is the important point. So let's see again, Docker uh, PS. So this is running, whereas Hello World, Nginx, uh, uh, previous one, Kause, Whale, that is ex exited. This is not exited because the reason is hyphen D. Okay, so the once the work is done, then you have to exit. That is the main concept of containerization, so that it will save the space, RAM space, etc. So web server, you need to continuously run and accept the request, web application request. That's why it is keep running and uh, port 80 is open from the container. And on the host mission, on the local host, on this mission, it is 8080. So your yeah, same thing you want to test, you can test from the command line, uh, curl local host 8080. The same information but it is displayed in the html format welcome to nginx same thing what you got here with the 88 welcome to nginx okay so it is successfully uh, displayed the content of the index file index.html file and uh, yeah if we go for the bigger size of applications tomcat is uh, another one which you can test here let me see here tomcat having a lot of versions 11 is the latest version i'm just going with the stable version that is 9 version tomcat is up and running okay so here also i'm just used iphone d it is going to run in background what is the port 8080 is the default port from the tomcat inside the container on this machine on this 13 ip we got a open port so this is a tomcat Okay, so if I open, I got a 404. HTTP is running, server does not have any application. That is the reason. So let's see how we can solve that problem. Docker PS, we have Tomcat. Uh, Tomcat is running with this one. Okay, so if you want to go inside the Tomcat container, Docker EXEC iphan it yeah. means we are going inside the container it and you can give the container id or you can give the container name any one of them is fine okay then i'm going to say bash any container uh, yeah you can see is it a bash available or sh available that depends on the platform so inside the container also we have a operating system so how to check operating system which operating system it is using this container 
Okay, so in this one, I want to put a file. Welcome to Docker Kubernetes. Okay, so this is a message I just want to put into Vibo folder index.html. Okay, so this message will be displayed when you open this and give that and power slash y power. You got that message? Okay, so it is not visible good. So what we can do, you can make it h1 tag. You need any time you can change the content, right? So HTML H1 is very simple. You can use here and then here, end of the tag. Right. All right. Now let's see again, refresh. We got it bigger. Nice. So that's how uh, web applications can be deployed into the Tomcat. So this is a one simple example, but uh, real time this folder will be pushed into this Tomcat container always. That is what the automated thing required. This is a one of the process of the deployment container. Okay, so I think we are good understanding about what is uh, <clears throat> uh, container, how it works. Okay, so what is the difference between monolithic and microservices? Earlier, SDLC was using waterfall model and uh, to complete entire uh, end to end it takes longer time so the release time will be six months or a year earlier so if you see this this whole box is completely developed in one particular language single language java applications all java <coughs> java related uh, changes will be done then one single big er file jar file will be created Okay, whereas in microservices, different color boxes are there. Red color, green color, blue color, gray color. So you can think of every color is one language used container. One container can be developed in Python. Another container can be developed in Java. Another can be developed in the JavaScript. Okay, so there is no limit for language. You can run in any language a service. So everything will be exposed as a service. One is going to work as a function. Let's say you want to add two numbers that will be developed in Python very quickly. You develop it and put into a container, add container. So another container that is running in Java that needs add. So it want to add, then it can call this container and use that. Give the two numbers and get the result. So that is what service. Okay, so that is how the microservices interact with each other and communicate with each other and they can be shipped very easily. So develop, run, ship anytime that is very, very flexible when you work with the containerization. So what are the microservices? It's all softwares, software architecture. It's a small, uh, simple, independent applications which you can develop you can run in a smaller amount of process uh, the cpu process and it is going to communicate very easily with the other applications which are running on the same platform it is no limitation language agnostic apis they are 
APIs, application program interface, which you are going to run inside your containers. So these services are small and highly decoupled. Anytime you can use them, use and throw it. Use and throw is a main concept. Just like you use uh, one cup of uh, the tea which you have had, and after that you can dispose. Just like that, microservices runs the services and dispose. Just like we have seen that, hello, hello world or uh, will say containers. Okay, so you can have the two types of models. You want to make continuously available, then that is stateful. Another one is stateless stateless which we have seen stateful is tomcat nginx they are stateful okay so uh, running a modular approach every module you don't need to be in the same language you can run it in a different language and you can build it so system can be built very easily because it is broken down into small pieces and it will be uh, having the solutions very quickly and when some problems you encountered only that particular piece of code need to be modified and you can fix it that's the advantage you can get it from the microservices uh, and I, yeah uh, i don't know like if it is correct or not i i also have a, a confused mind me so uh the containers let's say there are two containers and then our containers are supposed to talk with each other mm -hmm. Really? Mm. I think uh, no, right? I mean, I see. I think like one. They are isolated, that... actually. By Another... built, by built, they are isolated. Each container is different. You cannot directly exchange anything, unless yes. you write something. Then only it will be communicate. So container to container, you need to establish connection and network communication. Then only it will work with the services. Services will be exposed with the endpoints. So if endpoint is not defined, endpoints are again two types. One endpoint can be exposed to everyone that is public. One endpoint will be used within the internal means database cannot be exposed. That can be internal. So only private. So web, web applications which are running that services requires the database service. Okay, so that one can access only that particular service which is exported by the database service. <clears throat> I think, I think uh, every container has its own database pod. No, 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 every container doesn't. You can create differently. Just now we have seen Tomcat. Tomcat doesn't have any database. Nginx doesn't have any database. If you want to connect, you can create. That is, a, as per the project requirements, you are going to connect. One project may require MySQL, another project may require the Redis. So mm -hmm. that, that is different requirements. As per the requirement, you can connect with the services. Database oh. is also one service. Yeah. And the yeah. one container can, run, can only run one application, right? Exactly. One part. One container contains one application. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think I might. That's all. Like I might have mistaken or confused. Oh, okay. Now got it clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So microservice autonomy is uh, like decoupled architecture. So every container is separate, independent. So to communicate there are different uh, design patterns how you work with the middleware uh, what are the things which we need how you want to connect with one service to another service all these are defined so according to your project you need to design that one microservices communicate across services one service cannot give entire resolution right so you can have entire yeah so one project you are going to have 10 services, all the 10 services will be created, but they don't have connection, then it doesn't work. You need to have a communication that will be centralized, that will be service bus communication. So microservices internally uses that one. Microservices are distributed. Uh, you can have uh, two, three machines running Docker engines, and you can have that uh, containers across all these machines. TCP communication, internally, generally it is favored. Uh, establish point-to-point -point communication. Uh, UDP communication means it is disconnected. So that's why TCP is preferred in the microservices communication. Microservices do one thing only. Remember that one, one thing only. Nginx can run Nginx container only. It cannot do Tomcat. 
it cannot do any other thing inside the container only one process will be running only one process nginx process only running tomcat container runs only tomcat service tomcat process only running okay so that is a one thing at a one time they do very well that that is the main logic behind the containers that is a limitation also remember that point can't i run a database container inside inside the tomcat or tomcat runs uh, mysql it doesn't run okay not restricted to a specific technology as you know so if i'm working on one particular microservice that may be dotnet another one can run in java another one can run in the python that is no restrictions facilitates circuit breaker bulk head and handshaking pattern this is how it is going to work okay so handshaking is always happens between the microservice to microservice the service will be exposed and huge number of uh, microservices will be communicating for one particular project okay to avoid cascading failures we are going to have the microservices so one service one particular function is not working other function uh, will fail in the monolithic application the entire application will stop but here in microservices if one service is not working only that service will be impacted remaining all services keep running okay so that link connection uh, ask you can avoid with the microservices any point of time you can replace pod you can replace the uh, containers anytime so pod means that it goes to the con kubernetes but uh, here in docker containers so main differences are here architectural difference uh, monolithic and uh, microservice level if it is too long to read then okay we will see this one in the regular sessions okay so docker is having two different versions docker ce and docker ee enterprise edition and community edition so community edition is freely available and uh, enterprise edition you need to buy it and support license okay so when you are having enterprise edition what are the benefits you are going to get docker orchestration is free that is form networking secured and docker certificate uh, certified infrastructure we are going to have the plugins isv that is more secure images will be there when you are going to use the enterprise docker so docker hub is having public hub so anyone can push you can also create your own image and put it in the docker hub so certified images only you want to use in your infrastructure then uh, enterprise edition will be restricting that one of there is official images whenever you see docker command docker search command there is a one column for official images so the official images only used in the enterprise edition that is the advantage private registry it will be available with the enterprise edition separately available and uh, container application management is very easy from the gui also you can launch start stop containers right now we are just using the cli and uh, you can also use the GUI when you use the Docker Enterprise Edition. Security okay. scanning, yeah. Yeah, in uh, EC version, we, we can also build our own images, right? Does it need to use the public or private? Like uh, you said, um, in Enterprise, uh, we will need, I mean, if we want to pull any image, we have to pull, we can pull only the certified images, right? Correct. But if we want, use our own image created by us hmm. in that case you can use any of uh, these available versions right no need it to be enterprise yeah yeah if you are using community edition you can use any any one of them publicly available but there is a chances of getting the virus hmm. uh, so it's a vulnerable problem so you may encounter that's main reason if you want to run an enterprise level application definitely go for the uh, this enterprise edition yeah so for learning purpose ce is enough uh, we can uh, practice on the ce only docker ce yeah, and, and also like in docker we need to be as a root to do anything right like it is a root based up you know what is say engine yeah correct we have to be root that's all no no other users are allowed other users also alert. The only thing is you need to add uh, the user to the group, Docker group. 
Okay, but usually for anything for running the applications, we have to be as a root. No need, no need. Suppose yeah. Raji user you created, Raji user is belongs to Docker group, then you can create images, you can run the containers, everything you can do. Uh, no, no, not as a person, not as me. Let's say like uh, we are asking Docker uh, mm. to deploy something. Uh, so it deploys as a root, right? By default. I so you're saying root is a mass. Yeah. Uh, the Docker engine is going to be run in root, but uh, applications can be use other users also. Deployment process will take yeah with other users also you can run and you can work with that that is not a problem only thing is that should be member of docker group. okay i mean i hear saying like uh docker is a root based demian uh if, and there are some securities concerns or something something like that like it's not agentless i i, I think that i think so i have to do more study before asking <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. yeah actually like i work in the real world right so most of the times do developers will create the docker files and then we are just responsible for uh, building it and deploying it so not knowing the entire architecture of, the, uh, of it in the git okay and so because of that uh, here what we see is completely a bit different not completely a bit different to the real-time uh, projects Mm. Uh, because uh, many people will be working it's not just as here only just as right yeah i got a bit of confusion to the but the when you dig into the container understand much more because in real time world you just run that and you will be getting image and that will be pushed somewhere like that right so yeah now after learning these things you will be knowing much more clarity and you will get clarity in the communication how it is happening uh, how the services will be exposed to each other how the endpoint will work all those things we will we'll see in our course yeah so i think we are running out of time so i will stop today's session here and we'll continue once you commit for the course thank you uh, yeah can i ask a question like uh like uh, i think i can have a call with you when you're whenever you are free sure Not sure yeah, yeah you can call and then also where we can access these recordings is there anywhere like um, because this because will be first session, it, so uh, this will be available and uh, yeah going forward other recordings will be shared when you share the fees and <laughs> the email address so that will be privately shared so share your Gmail address to me directly. Yeah, that's why I said like I, I it it is good to have a private call with you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, then I'll ping you. Thank you oh. so much because it's so theoretically based, and then it's very hard to get this type of information anywhere. Like uh, practical, it's okay, but not theoretically, right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah, going forward, it will be always uh, practical. Every session will be practical, but first you have to understand theory, then <laughs> go into the deep. Yeah, because we end up not knowing what we are doing end of the day. <laughs> we yeah. don't know how theoretical knowledge uh -huh. or the concepts. Okay, then. thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks for.